Welcome to this tutorial in which we will be creating an anime trail, a very simple one, in Unreal Engine 5. So let's just jump into it. So this simple little ribbon is what we will be creating today. And it's just a very simple ribbon so that we have it available for us in uh, future tutorials. Uh, nothing super advanced about it, but that's what we're creating today. So here we are inside of Unreal Engine 5. Let's just get started by creating a folder called uh, Blueprints, or let's call it uh, Niagara actually. And in this folder we're going to be creating our things, and it won't be a lot of things, we'll actually be just creating two things. We'll start off with the material, we'll call this M underscore dash trade. Open that up, and this will just be a simple material that will be used for our uh, trail, or our ribbon actually. And the first thing we need to do is we need to change the shading model over here from default later on lit. Then we'll right click and type in particle color and just plug in the first pin into emissive color and then we're done with this. So this just allows our particle system, if we use this material to use the particle color defined in the particle system to use that color. And that's all we need for this to do. Uh, next we're going to be creating our system, so we'll go to, go to FX and create a Niagara system. We can create an empty system. We'll call this ns for Niagara system underscore dash trail. We'll open that one up, dock it up here. So this won't be as detailed about Niagara as I want it to be. Uh, there will be tutorials coming up about that uh, along the lines further on. Um, so for now, this will be a little bit less in depth than I usually go into things, but hopefully that's good enough. Um, this is just so you have the ability to create a trail uh, so you can make use of it uh, and, and have it available for future tutorials, which is what we're going to be needing it for. Anyway, to start off then, uh, what we're going to be do doing here is just uh, adding an emitter and we can click an empty one over here and then we'll get it over here. We can rename it to dash trail um, like so. And then we can start off with removing the sprite renderer. Uh, renderers come in different shapes and sizes. We have five different ones. We have a sprite renderer, which uh, renders a 2D shape, uh, a, t a 2D image, basically. A ribbon render, which uh, uh, renders out a, um, a cut through, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, an intersection of a type of, um, uh, object so it can be something like a plane or an actual object in 3d space and it will just uh, use that as its uh, ribbon to uh, make a trail out of it a mesh render renders a mesh light render renders light component render i don't actually know what it renders but uh, i'm sure we'll get back to that at some point as well for now we're going to be using the render uh, ribbon renderer uh, and for the ribbon renderer uh, part over here, we can change the facing mode from screen to custom for now. We can change the material from blank to uh, dash trade rights. Yes, so we have that available, and that's basically all we need to do here for now, I think. Um, we can go up to initialize particle. This is useless to us now because we're not uh, rendering a sprite anymore. So we want to instead add a initialized ribbon over here. And we can set the life size to something like 0 0.5. This is easy to change later on, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Sorry, matter that much. Ribbon width is going to be the, the width of the ribbon that we try to create. We can set this to something like 100. Again, this is something we can change later on. Yeah, not a big deal. Um, actually, let's set the lifetime to one again, so it's, it's clear what it actually does. Um, and then in addition to that, we want to go to our uh, emitter update, and we want to add uh, per frame, spawn per frame. And this is an experimental one, but I found this one gives a better results. So we'll just have this one and spawn count one will do just fine when it comes to that. Um, then we can go to particle spawn here and we want to add a module here 
but we haven't created that one yet. We're going to be using it in a scratch pad. Uh, but for now, we can change. Um, let's make a color, I think. We can go to particle update. Type in color, like so. And then you can click a little chain over here. You can type in curve. You get a color from curve, which means it will transition from one color to another color. You can right click on the top left little part over there and we'll drag and choose a color that's green over here. Then we can right click on the top right one and we can choose a color that's yellow. So that means that it will be going from green to yellow. You can right click the, the bottom right one and change the opacity from zero to one, which means it's solid. So it goes from green to, to yellow like so. And this is over the lifetime of the, the particles or the ribbons then basically. In addition to that, we can also change something like scale. So we can go in here and to a particle update again. Now we can do a scale ribbon width. Uh, so our ribbon width was to begin with 100. We can again change this one by clicking the chain and typing curve. Then it will be 100 width at the beginning, the origin or the, the when the particle spawns and when the particle is about to die, depending on the lifetime then, it's going to be zero. So it's going to be shrinking in width basically as, as it lives on. And that's fine for now. Um, so let's add our little scratch pad that we need to add. So we'll go to scratch pad and we'll create a module here now that we can make use of. And we can call this something like uh, ribbon rotation uh, because we, we changed how, um, if we go back to our ribbon renderer, we changed our facing mode to not be screen and instead be custom. Uh, facing mode screen means it will always be um, changing so it shows against the screen. That's the rotation it's going to be getting. Uh, we can change this so we can have a custom one. And uh, that's basically what, that's what this scratch pad uh, module is supposed to do. Uh, and to do this, we can go to uh, particle attributes. We can type in vector and we can say uh, ribbon rotation. A little bit difficult to see like so. So ribbon rotation there. We can drag that as our map set over here. So this is what we're going to be calculating for it. And in addition to that, we'll have a uh, vector here as a module input, which means that it will be a input into this node. And we can call this one uh, ribbon start rotation. And we can drag that in so. We can also go down to engine provided down here and we can type in local to no, local to world. And this allows us to have a translation from local world local to world space for this rotation. So if we do a trans transform form uh, vector something like so. We can hook them up like so, and then the result from that is the ribbon rotation out. And we can compile and we can apply and we can go back here. We can go to our uh, particle update now and sorry, our particle spawn and we can add this one. So we can say, uh, what did we call it? Ribbon rotation. So we click the plus and ribbon rotation. So now we have a ribbon rotation here and we can set one here, for example, like so. Compile and save. And now we have done the, the trail effect. So let's see if it actually works by actually doing some other logic than, or actually making use of this. So first off, we need to have a place where this shows. So we'll go to our character. We open up our mesh, go to where our skeleton mesh is. The reason I do this is because I have access to all the animations and everything like that up here. So you can either have a socket created for where you want to have this uh, trail uh, work, or you can have an existing bone if you want to, it's completely up to you. I'm going to make it simple for me and just going to use the, the spine, no, the pelvis actually, the pelvis bone. 
so what we need to do then is we need to go to an animation and let's go to our run animation. We can pause this. We can say we want to add a trail over here. So we go to our notify uh, track here. We'll right click. We'll go to notify state and we go to time Niagara effect. From here we can define how long we want the Niagara effect to last. So by doing this we can see that it's going to be a while when it's not working, then it, when it's going to show a trail and then it's not going to show a trail and then it's going to be looping this over and over because this is a looping animation. Uh, by clicking the time Niagara effect now we can configure it so we can go here and we can pick our dash trail. We can also have a local offset and rotation offset here if we want to. We also need to define a socket name where we want this to work from. I'm going to be using the pelvis like I said. Uh, like so. And that will be fine, I think. We can save this and we can start playing and see what it looks like. So this is the effect that it causes now. So you can see that it sort of, um, uh, I think the camera is a little bit too close though. Let's fix that. Camera boom, 450. So, okay. So you see, we have a, a trail that's being created uh, when the character is moving basically and it's uh, looking fine when we're running sideways it doesn't look that good when we start moving the camera up or down or when we're moving this way and this has to do with the, the calculation of the rotation of of the trail basically uh, what we could do we could go and go to where is it there dash trail and we can change the uh, let's see here. We go to custom side vector, I think. Like so, and we have it along X, I believe. That should be. Uh, did not work well. Um, mm -mm. Let's see what happens if we go. Uh, I have forgotten here exactly what numbers I played around with. Uh, one moment, let's see if we can get it to look better like this. Doesn't seem to play at all anymore. Uh, let's go back to our custom. That's not quite what I want. Uh, I think I know what it is. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Ribbon rotation. Yeah, so we have part we have particle data available to us. Uh, if I understand, let's see if this is correct. We have um, things like uh, ribbon with ribbon. I do believe we have a particle attribute called ribbon facing, yeah. Okay, so we need to get rid of what's happened here. Uh, we are trying to set the ribbon facing on the particle, which is an attribute it already has. So this one that I created here, I created incorrectly. Like so, we want to have our ribbon facing. Can I remove the ribbon rotation? Ribbon facing, so that means that what we calculate here actually gets overwritten uh, for the uh, ribbon itself. Not sure what's happened to the interface, it went all bonkers. Uh, like so, uh, we apply that, and let's see here, we go to our. What is going on with the interface? Uh, custom side vector and ribbon rotation. Possibly why. Let's check and see if it works again. That looks completely wrong. I'm assuming it is because I want the X1. Like so. This should be okay. Uh, also, you don't need to uh, have recompile like I'm doing all the time either. It's, it's fine regardless. But now you see it's going along this specific axis. Uh, now you might be confused why it's the x-axis and that's because it's in relation to this um, uh, let's see here the the custom side vector by saying side vector it's it's using a, a different orientation so 
um, you have to see it as sort of along which axis like it, it's in in relation to the local space let's just not jump into it <laughs> it's going to be fine like this basically you have a, a, a ribbon now going like this and if you wanted to do it for something else you might have to change the axis depending uh, for what you're going to be using it uh, when it comes to the uh, let's see the the width and all, everything like that we can now go in and we can go and say uh, here we want to have a width of let's say 50 instead and we can go in here and click and play and we can see that that's what it's going to be looking like now um, or or change any of these properties that we want to have them so like we can have 0 0.5 and it will die off quicker so now that is what it's looking like or we can change the actual uh, how long this trail is supposed to be lasting so now it's is running the whole animation so if we save that and run now we will have a continuous uh, trail for our character the whole time and you can see that it's swaying a little bit because it is unlike when we were doing the anim trail for uh, using a car cascade particle system this specific way is only attached to one specific point a socket and it's using that so it's the pelvis and the pelvis is going up and down and it's using that as the center point and then is using uh, the width to expand to see how, how wide it's going to be and it's using the orientation uh, that we calculated from here uh, to see uh, where where that width is supposed to be shown which means that for our case then it's going to be along the character's length basically uh, so yeah, th this is a way uh, that you can create a trail and uh, feel free to play around with this We will be going into to more detail about Niagara systems and particles and, and stuff like that later on But I just wanted this to be a, a quick like This is what we can create so we can make use of it in later tutorials basically. I hope that makes sense Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video leave a like if you did not like it leave a dislike leave any suggestions or comments you have down below Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.